intending to be heard, Joseph Valley and David Dingham, 298 Exeter Road, and other parcels input on use and zoning. Hmm. I'll give you that copy so you can use it. Ah. Good evening. My name is Joe Valley, and I'm working with David Dingman. And I've asked Peter Sorry to join us to talk about uh, the property. What we want to do tonight is to show the board a property that's owned and um, real greater mm -hmm. the real lane east, all the property around the falls. Uh, um, Mike Dingman and Paul Montreal. Mike and Paul have owned the land for about 30 years now, close to 35 years. They're at a point um, in their lives when they're thinking about succession and uh, what's going to happen to the next generation. And so um, they are, have begun to look at the property in earnest to determine what its future might be over the next 25 years. And uh, so we're here tonight to just to give you uh, a sense of what um, land they own, what their thinking is about it, to get some input from this board as to what your thoughts might be as to what they're thinking about. We know we'll have to come before you um, as we develop the land over, over time. We met last week with the visioning committee to give them a sense of what we were thinking about. And I uh, think it's appropriate that we also give you that same perspective. The land that they currently own includes Liberty Lane East, which is where the uh, Fisher Scientific Building is. There's a single building on the property. There's a helipad. On the Liberty Lane East side, um, there is the potential for about 245,000 square feet of office. Um, the land is made up of pads that are surrounded by wetland. And so, um, by definition, because the pads um, are relatively small, any construction would have to be relatively vertical there. And uh, in that manner, um, there are probably six buildable pads on Liberty Lane East. Liberty Lane West, there are a total of 35 acres on the west side. Um, there is, um, again, the potential based on parking ratios and land area, and there are some wetlands interspersed. There is the potential for about 245,000 square feet of office there as well. Um, about nine years ago, we came before the planning board and received permission to build a building for Timberland. At the time, Timberland was considering moving to Hampton. We went through the process and got permission and uh, Timberland determined um, at the 11th hour that they were not going to proceed. Um, we own 125 acres by the water tower site. Mm -hmm. um, much of it is wet, but there are buildable spots. There is probably 15 to 20 acres of buildable land in this area. This is the restaurant Bonta. We own eight acres adjacent to the restaurant has some visibility from 95 and uh, we own 6.3 acres on Drake side uh, this parcel of land here and so what we're what we've been trying to do for probably a good 10 years is to figure out what to do we've had some opportunity over time to sell some of the land for development and Mike and Paul have chosen not to do that because they felt that the use that was being proposed wasn't in concert with their vision of what they created here, nor did they think it would be particularly attractive to the town. So um, that was something that uh, they, they, have, they chose not to do. Um, so what we're thinking about doing is really trying to create a somewhat of a mixed use on the land that remains. And our, our idea would be that on the eight acre site, uh, parcel adjacent to the restaurant, that we would hope to uh, consider that for retail, commercial, hotel. We have, had, we have had some discussions with some hotel people who would like to consider a hotel on that site. Um, we think that having hotel, restaurant, and then there is land available for 
some um, retail that would be consistent with the architecture of what the restaurant is, that kind of scale of retail there that would be uh, relatively high quality. And um, on the 125 acre site, water tower site, We've been talking with the state for several years about um, building for them um, a courthouse on that land. I can show you that plan that uh, we had developed for them just to give you some sense of it. Uh, um, I, this, is, this black outline is the building. The water tower property is here. You can see that. And this was the proposal that we worked out with the state. The state is uh, in the midst of trying to find funding to make something mm -hmm. happen there. Um, quite frankly, our feeling is that this isn't the best use for this property. We think that a residential use would be better suited here. We own a lot on Falcone Circle and we have not developed that lot because we would consider it using that lot to access the back land. Um, this parcel is currently zoned industrial, and so our housing opportunities here are limited. But we wanted to just talk with you about that possibility, amongst other things we're going to talk about. So that's the 125 acre piece. Um, on the 10 acre site, we were before the Zoning Board of Appeals about a month ago in a request to build 150 apartments. The plan that we showed the zoning board was this one. Um, what we attempted to do, I'm, I'm upside down, I'm sorry. What we attempted to do was to provide as much green area as we could um, with adequate parking. Some of the buildings that we were proposing to build had parking uh, integrated into the buildings, some parking. Other parking, as you can see, the majority was going to be surface parking. Uh, and of the 12 acre parcel we called a warming hut site, there was a two acre piece which we were going to reserve for future commercial or retail to kind of complement what we were thinking about for the site adjacent to the restaurant here. The, um, this, this parcel is currently zoned industrial. We tried to understand what under industrial we could do as a matter of right, and it's essentially this plan. And it shows about a 106,000 square foot office building, about 600 parking spaces. Um, we tried to respect the 40 foot setback. We, didn't, we don't have to do that, but we thought that for this purpose, we might as well give that a try. Um, we don't happen to think that this is a good use of this land, however, this is what we have under the current zoning. Um, so what, would, what, we're, what we're thinking about, we have water and sewer, all of the infrastructure is in place for all of our land. Um, there, the sewer runs on this 6.3 acre piece, we'd have to come up a little bit, but essentially we have um, enough, enough infrastructure in place by way of water and sewer. So what we're thinking about by way of a concept so that we can um, do this in, in a kind of mixed use fashion is as follows. We, we would like to consider housing on this 125 acre site. That would mean rezoning to multifamily. Well, this eight, eight acre site, which currently is industrial, works for us. We think we can do some very nice uh, retail, commercial, possibly a hotel in the back on the eight acres to work with the restaurant. On the 10 acre site, we think that housing is the best alternative and, and we would like to consider rezoning this 10 acres to multifamily to give us the ability to do housing in this site. The, the logic of this site um, for uh, industrial use, we, we've not found a user. It's a quite a nice wooded site and we think that this whole idea of trying to create some retail and then some housing to support the office park, which we would like to leave as is in the industrial zone, um, has certain logic to us. 
uh, on the west side of Liberty Lane. We come along Murray Batchelder, and the piece of this is general. The balance is in industrial, and we'd like to consider rezoning this to a multifamily use as well. There's a, there are lots of large, there are huge buffers here. We happen to think that uh, doing a um, reasonably dense, but not too dense, multifamily community here as opposed to building a 300 to 250,000 square foot office building with 1,100 spaces um, doesn't seem to make sense. I think, um, this, I think this, is the, this is the plan that we got approved at the planning board nine years ago. This is the building that Timberland was going to have built. It's 235,000 square feet. There are the requirement is to have 1,100 parking spaces. We think that um, a, a less intense use on that property might make some sense. And so we're really trying to get some ideas and thoughts. The visiting committee was quite helpful. They talked about connectivity and trying to make it make sense to have certain uses so they all kind of work. Um, I'm sorry, the, the, the other side is the 6.3 acre site which um, is currently in the general zone and we would consider you know, leaving that in the general zone as we think about how we develop the land. So um, I think that uh, Mike Damon and Paul Montreux have a couple of choices at this point. One is they would like to be able to look out over 25 years, work with the planning board and with people in town to make sure that what's done here over those years is done well, it's done at a reasonable pace and that there's certain logic to what happens. Alternatively, um, and they have been approached, their alternative choice is to just bundle it up and while they're still able they, to sell it, as a, as a, just sell the land in bulk. There are people who would be quite interested in buying it. I don't think that's their first choice. I think they would prefer to do this over a gradual time. They've been in Hampton for over 35 years and all of what they have done, I think, most would agree they've done quite sensitively and in quite good style. Um, did I miss anything, David? No. Peter? No. So, that it? so we're looking for some thoughts. We're, we're really starting at the very beginning. We know that um, changing the zone requires town meeting. Uh, we, we know that uh, without the support of the planning board, that's probably not possible. We understand that. The sooner we can get an understanding of um, that, um, they can determine how they're going to proceed with the land that they've had for the past 35 years. I'm happy to answer any questions or thoughts anyone has or the logic of what, why we're thinking about doing what we're doing. Um, does it make any sense to, to do it this way? We, we have what we have. It's 90% uh, zoned industrial land. Um, we have been unable to attract the kind of users that we would like to have for office park use. Pease absorbed an enormous amount of square footage over the years. We thought at one point that we ha would have some success, but I think that the combination of what's happened to Pease and what's going on up at Portsmouth has essentially taken all of the all of the life out of any opportunity here in Hampton. So we don't see that. What we do see, though, is the ability to create some housing, some very well done housing here. Do we think we can attract some commercial or retail activity here and on a piece here? This we think we can absorb over time. The office, the little pods, because this is a very beautiful piece of land and lots of these sites overlook the ponds that have been created. And uh, the logic on the west side is that uh, butting up to Mary Batchelder, there, there, there possibly would be a, a pretty good, there would be a need and um, some demand for housing. Um, back here, we don't think that uh, the industrial zone makes any sense back here. It butts up to Falcon Circle, and um, we think that the intensity, the, the use would be much better served in a residential setting. Any questions that I can answer from anybody? Questions from the board? A number of them, I guess, but uh, I'm trying to sort it all out. You've given us a lot of stuff in a, 
we don't we we expect to come we will be back we expect to have you guys have a chance to think it through and absorb it and so I I know it's a lot to, it's a lot first time through let me get specific on a couple of the 10 acre site that you went to the zoning yeah. board and got the night all right did you withdraw we withdrew you yes. withdrew okay and then the, the 125 across the street yes in both of those certainly the 10 acre site is a big uh turnout from the neighborhood falcon circle etc and i remember when we dealt with that one lot on falcon circle right. There was again a lot of reaction yeah. to that yeah. that, right. that you were ultimately going to use that as an access Correct. Uh, into that area. Mm -hmm. um, you, you mentioned multifamily. Yes. Um, that abuts basically the single family, but it also abuts uh, the highway. So here? Or yeah. Here? No, the here. 125. Yes. Can you? Maybe I think on that. yes, and I think that my impression was that well, there were three people who spoke from Falcon Circle. That there wasn't a big just there wasn't a big crowd. I've seen big crowds. There was certainly opposition by three people who came. So, and you're talking and, the ten acre site now. No. Yeah, for no. this piece, yes. Yeah. I'm I think they objected to this. Um, wh what we couldn't get a, and, and what we couldn't get across to them was that by matter of right, the use here would be so much more intense than what we were proposing. They, they, they didn't perhaps understand that, and maybe I'm incorrect, but um, uh, 500 cars, 1,000, 100,000 square foot building here by right, um, nine, everybody comes in at 8.30, everybody leaves at 5 o'clock. I think that's a different, we, we didn't have a chance to really talk about it in the way we should have, that's probably our fault, and we plan to meet with that neighborhood as a neighborhood, as our next stop, so that we can kind of have a conversation outside of that. Um, so, but they're, they, yes, they objected to this because of traffic, essentially, and, and they felt that the way it was was fine, but it's not going to be the way it is. That's the reality of it. And, and on this, and did I answer your question? Well, yeah, yeah. the 125 acre, I guess, is probably going to result in the same kind of reaction, I would suspect. Mm -hmm. um, well, from, that, from that neighborhood, yes. which the probably abuts that more than yes. the 10-acre site. The alternative is a courthouse building. Mm -hmm. At some point, something is going to happen to the site. It's the town zoned and industrial. That meant they wanted something to go there, I think. And so we're reacting to the land that we have and to what we can do with it. And we think that a less intense use would be housing rather than a state courthouse. Mm -hmm. they, there was great objection to that by the community. I understand that. That's not, that's not lost on us. Well, that little lot on Falcone. I'm sorry? The, li the little lot on Falcone. Circle, yes. That w there was a lot of discussion because of the wetlands <coughs> and then the buffer. That's correct. I so now, if you put a road through there, You'd be right going right by that guy's house. Yeah. The, the road would have less, would be less intense a use than the house on that land. I think that my recollection of those hearings was that we, we, I, I believe that we answered the questions to do with weapons and the fact that um, what we were doing there was not going to be detrimental. But I do understand it was very controversial. I, I understand that. To what would you suggest we do with this land? How much of it is uplands? About 12 acres. Okay, so that's more of a true true buildable site. Correct. Is what we're I, thought, I thought I mentioned that. I'm no, sorry. We, we keep talking about 125 no, acres, no. and a tenth of that is buildable. Correct. Ah, okay. And does that tenth of those 12 acres include buffers, or is that not including buffers? I, if I get, I don't know the answer to that, Keith, I'm sorry. I don't have an answer um, specifically. But I know that we were up there and um, planning there. I think there's probably about 10 acres of buildable, inclusive of buffers. Okay. Um, it's all upland. It's quite rocky, but it's buildable. Because we, we did some test holes some time back. 
Can I just jump in on that, yeah, Keith uh, and others? The map that I provided here is something that the RPC do recently, and it shows, uh, and this is based on uh, information we got from Ed Tinker, mm -hmm. Chief Assessor, vacant parcels with possible future development sites um, with the zoning overlaid and wetlands overlaid. And um, hmm. the, these, it might be a little hard to, to find these parcels, but they are on here, the ones that Joe, mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Valley has been talking about. Um, and like I said, it does show the zoning and the wetland. So I just provided that as sort of a guide. I'm, I got this originally for the vision subcommittee for their work, but I think it's something that useful for the board, too. Yeah, I have a question. The one 25 acre site, which is the 12 acres. Correct. I, mean, I just showed you what we own. I wasn't... I, I, yeah, I, 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 I understand. Not, but is is there other access? As I recall, when we were talking about that Falcone Circle lot mm -hmm. a couple of years ago, there's, a, I believe, a class six road that Correct. access is yeah. the, the water tower. Correct. I mean, is there a possibility to access that way? Yes. As opposed to the Falcon Circle? Yes. But I would suspect we need a second means, although I'm not sure of that. Second means of the mm -hmm. mm -hmm. uh, Just considering maybe it's emergency, I don't know. But that's a good thought. Mary we do have a class six road. Yeah. Have you talked at all to the Conservation Commission? No, we have not. I certainly would recommend that you talk. There's a lot of wetlands in there. We're building on every square inch of land in this town, and it seems a shame to lose the green space. What's the value of that property in today's dollars? <coughs> Just oh, the whole thing. All of it? $20 million? Okay. One more? Well, depends on... When you say all of it, what do you mean all of it? Well, I mean all the parcels East, West. he's talking about. I'm not talking about just one at a time. I'm just thinking, that, you know, the whole, all of the parcels that are shown on there. Hmm. I, I'm really concerned about all this, well, A, about traffic, B, about uh, um, wastewater, because our plant is... Um, approaching the point where we're going to have to put a huge investment into it uh, to do the extra flow from all the building and um, I, I'm just dubious about all this and, and I'd like to see exactly how much of that is literally wetlands literally in the I can't tell really very yeah, much from so this. That, that but conservation up. should be able to to give you an idea. Yeah, but we did some, we actually about 10 years ago we did a we mapped everything mm -hmm. 15 years ago, mm -hmm. and we. But we know that over 15 years, things have a tendency to change. Yeah, I so know. So we have not mapped it since then. I I just I'm yeah. really concerned yeah. about this this one because when you start having people building in wetlands and we've done it we've done it, and then it shifts the problem onto other people's property. Um, and and these multi multi unit builds, um, 150 apartments or whatever. I mean that's we're reaching a point where we're really jamming people into town. And I don't know if our infrastructure is prepared to take that. That's that's a separate issue. That but I say conservation. Yeah, they, but conservation. I would like <coughs> to hear what the conservation commission has to say. About the parcels individually or the whole thing? Well, I, I will be glad to go visit with them at a hearing. I can tell you that uh, Mr. Montron and Dingman, uh, uh, there is, the, the good news is that they have the ability to do things well and right. They always have. Mm -hmm. And they have the ability to do it over long term. And so I think that the approach that they would take would be one as conservative and as reasonable as possible. That would be my, that would, my experience with them, is that's how they approach things. We've done a lot of understanding of the Liberty Lane East Side, mm -hmm. and there are buildable parcels that are surrounded by wetland. We're comfortable that we are within the buffers of what the wetlands are and can build there. Mm -hmm. On this side, when we did the Timberland plan, mm -hmm. plan board and conservation, that building fit okay. We did not have to impose on wetland. We respected the setbacks back then. Possible donations to conservation easements and so forth to the town. 
for areas. I think if we do a good master plan and we have the, we're not talking about trying to get something done in three months mm -hmm. here. We're talking about taking the time appropriate, mm -hmm. the appropriate boards and agencies to do something right on this huge parcel of land. Mm -hmm. and we're talking about doing it over 25 years. If the Dingman and Montrone families should do it, mm -hmm. if they find that they're going to spend five years fighting about it, they'll sell it. Yeah, they'll, just, right. they'll just get rid of it and let somebody else. On your, on your, I know those impact to the wetlands and, and stuff. Which spot? Well, when they put the toll booths in, when they redid the toll booths. Right. Oh, yes. Right. There was a big yeah. issue with water and, and wetlands there. Yeah. And from going from your 125 acres across 95. Here? Yeah. And then when they redid 101, as you come down the hill at the bottom, it's wet on the right mm -hmm. to the north. Mm hmm as you're going out 101? Going out west. So we're going west. You're right about where the H is when you're going out 101. Yeah. Yeah. So that both sides of that 101 is affected with wetlands too. Yeah. I, I think that the, the the good news from our point of view is that th this is this is all pretty good. This is good uh, about 12 acres of good. The rest of it is not. But there are a good 12 acres of land here. It's worth a bit of money. This side has really been well thought through in terms of roads and setbacks and building pads. This, when we did Liberty, the, the Timberland parcel, we really spent a lot of time. We, we mapped everything. We're okay. This is all upland. Uh, uh, right, there used to be a big yeah. building down here. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. EPBA had a big white yeah. building there yeah. for time. Yeah. Correct. Any study of the, uh, where there are so many wetlands there, I know uh, there's a, a developer who's going to develop land on Winnicunit Road, and um, the ledge, he, you can't hit ledge until you go about 60 feet down, so he's mm -hmm. having to do pilings mm -hmm. to construct his building. Yeah, so I'm wondering at the expense of construction uh, I certainly am not happy to see multi um, dwelling uh, dwellings go anywhere in that area. Uh, Commercial, I don't have so much of a problem with, but I'm wondering about the construction costs for building in a wet area like that. Can I ask you what your objection is, just so that I understand it? Too? Overloading, overloading town services, overloading right. the wastewater plant. Before, that's that's before a whole we get separate too far issue. Off subject. Yeah. Let's pull it back in. Okay. And I think that your approach at taking it slowly, mm -hmm. discussing it with the Conservation Commission, bringing it back, talking about with, with the planning board mm. is the proper way to approach that kind of land and that amount of land. Yeah. So by taking it in little tiny pieces and putting it together, I think that that's the right way to go about it. Mm. Other than that, selling it and letting individual people come before us and go before yeah. the conservation people, that's the only other option. So in my opinion, you're doing the right thing. Yes, there's a lot of wetlands, there's a lot of issues to be dealt with, mm. but you're promising that you're willing to do it over a period of time, which means that compromises can be made, problems can be solved, and I think that you can move forward in the way that you want to, and I mm. think in a way that benefits the town by doing it that way. So I commend you on the way that you're thinking, mm, yes. provided that you stick to that. We will do that as long as we feel that we're getting the kind of constructive feedback and reasonable conversation. To have someone say that this isn't any good for housing because of traffic, and the alternative is three times or twice the number of cars, doesn't make sense to us. Can you give us something on a, on a single sheet, not quite that big, that shows us <laughs> Your proposals, you know, what you think ought to be in sure. residential yes. uh, or yeah, multi-family, I guess. Yeah. What I'll yeah. do is I'll do a plan up which says this is this stays commercial, yeah. hotel possibly, this we'd like to do multi-family, this is office, yeah. essentially the same. Mm. Well, I'll be happy to do that. That would be very helpful. Yeah. Yeah. That would help a lot. Yeah. Absolutely do that. Well, I think one of the things that we, we discovered in the visioning, mm -hmm. uh, I'm on that committee, I'm sorry I wasn't able to attend, mm -hmm. uh, is that it the way we've zoned the town is kind of stupid. Where now we're going back and revisiting what we've done mm. and saying, boy, that was stupid. Now we'd like mixed use. You know, before mm. we did business zone, you couldn't have residents in a business zone and you couldn't have businesses in residential zones. So what do we end up? A business zone with no people. You know, and That's so. That's what's happened here. Right. It's, it's the same problem. Mm. And so if, if you, so the, those parcels you've identified that could, could move to residential, 
for his own general, then you could do about anything you wanted to with them. Do you think uh, multi-family is a better zone for us, just in terms of dancing? Do we have a multi-family zone? Well, that would be general. General. Yeah. Or it could be business, depending on if you classify it as mixed use. The zoning board is business zone the same uh, dimensional that's, requirement. That's commercial. You can have, you can have right okay, right okay, business and multi-family. Multi right. Business <laughs> slash commercial. My point being that the <laughs> street <laughs> industrial, we're going to end up with an industrial zoning board can't rezone over over <laughs> concentration <laughs> of, of traffic. Town control. I mean, it was a good idea at the time, but I don't know if it's the right idea now. Over the years, we've spoken with several land planner types who've come up to advise us, and they've all said what you have is a perfect opportunity for mixed use here, because of the logic of having. Hotel, yeah. restaurant, commercial, housing, leading down to office park, mm -hmm. additional um, um, housing there, um, the ability to do some um, commercial work, commercial there. And up here, uh, this is sort of the funny piece. I understand this is a funny piece and that it can be quite controversial. And we have to deal with that somehow or way in this whole process. Um, but. Our hope is that we can kind of do it with you, not against you, and then we can do it together if it makes any sense, because it's, it's a huge piece of land. Oh, yeah. The time period that you're speaking about, the, between 15 and 25 years, right. I don't see any reason why you can't do it with us. But what we need to do, I think, is we need to get it figured out now, together, right? right. so that we, we kind of, because from Mr. Dingman and Montron's point of view, they, they want to make sure that when they're not here, that they've left this in good hands with their next <laughs> group coming up. Yeah. And so that's really why we're here and we're starting this conversation wow. with you. Okay. Would you mind if I ask you a question? Um, you don't have to answer if you don't want, but you said um, a criteria is not the best use. What is your criteria to say what is the best use? What are you using as criteria? Uh, I'm sorry, Keith. Uh, I, I'm missing your question. Of okay, what said you, wasn't. you had said that, you know, we can do this, we can do this, but we have a criteria that says that this is the best use. Why what is you your metrics that you've determined that? Oh, How did you oh, determine over that? Over the years, we've talked with land planner types, mm -hmm. and we've talked about this land with uh, assisted living folks. We've talked about this land with big box guys who come in, wanting to put a big box. Um, we've talked to people who wanted to do no end of in things that were allowed in the zoning. And from our point of view, we don't we never thought that was the way to approach doing this. And so we sat on our hands, so our criteria is to kind of look at it all at once. I may have not answering that question, I'm sorry, but we want to look at the whole thing with the town. We don't want to come in mm. bit by bit. Yeah. We want to do it all, get it done. If there are wetlands, for example, and we need remediation to those wetlands, let's get it figured out now because we do have land we can do that. Mm -hmm. So it's a it's sort of a big master planning effort. I think that uh, uh, some of these graduate schools of design, they would, this would be the greatest thing imaginable for them to do, mm -hmm. to be able to replan this piece of land. And you've got willing owners, I think, who have the patience and the ability to do it to a point, and then they're going to throw, the, throw in the towel. Have, have you gone to a Stanford or a Harvard or MIT to <laughs> to present this to them as a the proposal? The answer is we had a guy come up from the Yale School of Design, okay. looked at it with us, and uh, gave us input. We had a guy, so he was a ar landscape architect from Harvard, came up and looked, this was probably six years ago. Hmm. The guy from Yale was, I think, three years ago. And we did a whole bunch of plans, and we did sketches, and it all came mm -hmm. back. But it all came back to housing makes the most sense here and here. Office makes the most sense here. Commercial, retail makes the most sense here and here. Um, this was always a problem, mm. quite honestly. Okay, so Nobody that was your charrette. Yeah. yeah. Nobody could figure. We, this was always a big puzzle for us. Uh, and, and we concluded that if the state wants to buy it and put a building and we can get it done, is that the best use? And we don't know that we won't, we don't know that that's good. Just we have a philosophical problem. With We'd that. love to have the courthouse here in Hampton. I think that's that's pretty evident that we would like yeah. Hampton Courthouse returned. Somebody's got to find that the money. That's where the lot will be. But I'm just yeah. saying, people do want the courthouse back. 
I think we were felt good about the uh, Timberland project when that came forward. Um, we were very pro-development and bringing manufacturing or distribution in. I mean, it's a great access point. Mm -hmm. We are competing against two favorable mm -hmm. neighbors. Um, if we were located someplace else or those neighbors weren't there, this spot would be favorable because of the interchange. Mm -hmm. But when you deal with Keys with 16 and the yeah. port right there and Seabrook with actually have done some fantastic industrial development off of the, uh, you know, where Sam's is and Bachelor Road over there and stuff. Um, so I, I like the idea of mixed use, if, if that's the type of feedback that you're looking for. But I also <coughs> want to instill in you guys that if we're going to do apartments, let's have proper parking yeah. because it's nice to, to ask for not having proper parking, but time marches on. And I've seen so many things converted into condominiums because for whatever reason, change in ownership mm. may have an ROI that you guys, someone may be interested in at the time. They may want the money for some other type of investment. Um, but you've got to have enough parking. Um, you know, maybe modifications can be made on some of the industrial sites if they need 11,000 spaces for <laughs> something that maybe their processes won't require that because we're going to robotics and we may not have as many people at each machine, mm -hmm. processing machine. Um, but, you know, there are going to be more people here tomorrow than there are today, so we are going to need housing. Mm -hmm. um, and, I, and I would say that what I have seen developed there, the three major buildings you have on your property, are, are quite attractive buildings. Whether it's wheel abrader or science, Fisher Scientific or the Unitel structure. Um, I think that's great. Now, you haven't included the car barn and the antique warehouse storage over there? Yeah. And why is that not inclusive in your uh, threat? The answer is I'm glad you said that, Keith, because um, this is not. This parcel I should have mentioned and, and I have not. This parcel is about 30 acres. And it's zoned industrial as well, is that correct, Peter? And the back is residential. Yeah, well, we gave permission to build a warehouse to store cars, I think, at one time. Yes. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, if you go out and you should take a look, this really has, this has no yeah, value as residential land surrounded by the, it's, it's not good. So we would like to consider rezoning this to a broader use if possible as a mm -hmm. part of our whole presentation. Over, again, it's over time and, um, and, and that intersection, the 8 and the 10, that area, mm -hmm. if there's like a little village there, that's that's not a bad idea because the west end of town used to have a, a couple more little stores and stuff. And at one time the proposal was to have a dry cleaner out there and um, a couple, maybe a I don't call it a um, provision store, I think is more what you guys looked at it versus a 7-Eleven. Correct. Um, it's going to, whatever will, if Mike and Paul do it, whatever's going to be done, it's going to be done very well. Because they have the, the patience to do it very well and they know long-term value. So this is a long-term look that they're taking. They're not going to put anything in here that's going to take away from the real value. We had someone who came to us on this 10-acre site about four years ago and they wanted to put a industrial building in there. They wanted to do light manufacturing. And, we, we, and what we said to ourselves was, if we have a building of light manufacturing, the building was about 60,000 square feet, the car ratio was about 200 and some odd cars. We said, you know, this is right in the heart of our, where this is gonna affect here, it's gonna affect here, it's gonna, so we said, no, we're not gonna do it. So the issue is, Whatever we do is going to be done well because it's all going to be in concert with each other to make it good. And people have said to us, if you're going to have office, you need to have some services. You need a place to eat, you need a place to live with dry cleaners. Um, you need, if you're going to have offices, you need a place for someone to live so they can work and live here. So that's sort of, and we've, the planners have all kind of, all, we've all, they've all come back to this theory with us. That's why we're, how do you feel the impact when Study Nose opens? Do you think that's going to stimulate 
other micro manufacturing in this area or I don't think so because it's such an unusual use and, and I don't know that the, the demand is there it might have some effect on this land mm -hmm. I don't know what it is but uh, I don't feel necessarily strong that it's going to start a start a trend in any okay. way that's my own <coughs> thing without thinking about it really. thank you anybody else that's it yeah. Well, I'm at yeah. What we'd like to do is go, we'd like to visit with conservation. Mm, We're going to see the neighborhood. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, why don't we see the neighborhood and conservation and come back and see, and let's have, let the neighborhood come and talk about it too. Right? And yeah. As um, Fran requested earlier, to the yeah. same idea in a smaller mm -hmm. yep. format. format. We'll do it. Yeah. To be able to grab it and look at it. Terrific. Hmm. What kind of time frame are you talking about for zone changes? We're certainly not going to do it for oh, right. 14. Yeah. Um, 15, I think, would be the soonest. Yeah. We had hoped, though, you know, our wildest imagination said 14. You know, could we do it in 14? Because, you know, is it possible? I don't know. It's 14 is calendar, calendar, calendar I think it would be it's, it's difficult. virtually impossible. Right, because you, I mean, with zoning oh, changes, with the zoning as change. you know, you have to have public hearings, and then you have to wait yeah. so many days before. Oh, there's going to be a lot and on we're the we're at that calendar. Yeah. Yeah. Right now, we're, 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 we're kissing the, the dates as, okay. as we speak. Yeah. So for this year, I, I don't see it happening. Okay. But that doesn't mean that we're not willing to move forward and, and try to propose because those, those warrant articles have to be in by the first week in January I see well I think that you know I, well we were kind of hopeful we could push it but if you guys are saying we yeah, we, we need to get we need we're struggling with our own yeah. 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 I mean our own articles okay get them done in time our, I guess that the, the, the quick answer is we we need to get a sense from this board whether it makes any sense for us to continue with the hope that we can get this thing done and or, or at least with your support that doesn't mean the town meeting is going to do it right but with your support we get a pretty good chance and so if we get that sense over the next several months then we'll keep plowing along otherwise we need to report back to the owners and say too long a, too long a time frame you're right. better off right. with taking another I course. think the first step is to speak with conservation okay yeah and um, also get together the the um, information that we had asked for all right and um, by all means come back and let's talk about it and we can progress throughout the year and have zoning articles ready by the time mm. proposed zoning articles ready to be put on a ballot by the time that they're that they need to be so right. you have to have public hearings and you have to have time in between mm. the second and the first public hearing yeah. so those times add up Okay. And unfortunately, right now, I, I, we have five meetings left. Right. Yeah. And so this year, to throw in for more others yeah. would be very difficult. Okay. You guys know without, you know, because we we want to put as much thought into this as you do. Thank you. We're we're looking for that, quite honestly. Okay. So for, for us to just push something through and put it on the ballot just to make you happy doesn't make sense <laughs> to us. You're always welcome to do a petitioned article. You can do that. Yeah, you can. Yeah. Twenty-five. Um, that's due by December first, I think. <laughs> Petition I don't think that's the most logical. No, I'm just thing offering that. that up. No, thank you, kid. I, I know that's an option, but we want to. We, the, the idea is to do. If, we, if we're going to do it, we're going to do it with you. And the, if we're not, we'll tell you someone else is coming in. Okay. Very good. Thank you very much. Good. Thank you. Appreciate thank it. You. Good luck. Thank you. New public hearings 12-033, 48.